if those of us on Fox 2 News in the morning sometimes appear impaired, yes. loopy, yes. or otherwise wacky. Yes. Yes. Well, All we we may have a physiological reason for this. Since 1998, we have killed off more brain cells than the average person. That's according to a new sleep study. Dr. Ogile of the Clayton Sleep Clinic joins us with this rude awakening. Good, Good morning, morning, John. Boy, it looks like you had a you slept well last night. I slept well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the envy. I, I don't want to hurt those brain cells. Yeah. So they use mice. They they hooked them up to tiny little mice-like uh, electrodes and everything, and they were looking neurologically at the brain. And what did they find? What they found, which which is interesting and consistent with some of the things we've talked about before. If you remember, we talked about the genetic injury to sleep deprivation. We've talked about using the brain to clear toxic things. There's been several studies on this. This study follows up and, sh and reveals that sleep deprivation is actually causing injury and some cellular death to certain areas of the brain, and most importantly, an area of the brain called the locus ceruleus, which is a tiny little area in the brain which helps us with wakening. Really? Mm -hmm. So what damage would that do if, if you damage that? So it, it, it affects cellular, cellular injury causing awakening and also helping with interaction, thinking, and so forth. So I got you. It, it, it's also consistent to some degree with what we see clinically. Now this is a long way from a clinical explanation. It, it is, as you pointed out, rightly, a study in mice. So there's got to be much more work before we apply this to human beings. But we have seen people with chronic sleep deprivation over time as we fix all the issues yeah, you're related. Yeah, right now. Every time you come in here, you've done studies on this us. This is the great source of sleep deprivation is your, your work pattern. Yeah, I got five and a half hours last night. Th is that okay? No. For you, that's, that's quite a bit. It's not okay for normal. <laughs> yeah. But there, the injury over time, some folks, they will have, even after we fix everything, still have some residual uh, defects functionally for themselves during the day. They remain fatigued or tired are injured so this could explain some of that you have so many brain cells you're born with and you don't get them back you don't get them back it's like every time you drink alcohol you kill them off or certain types of uh, liquids um, what's interesting though is I was reading there's a protein and I'm trying to find it's like a sir t3 mm -hmm. and they're doing some studies with sir t3 what would that do protect your brain cells it, w it would protect you so this is also an interesting point for whatever reason, it has. To, we see this with alcohol, cigarettes, and also sleep deprivation. Some people are just biologically resistant to the effects. So in, if you take a group of people and sleep deprive them, some of them will be dysfunctional. Others, for whatever reason, have the ability to resist those effects for a period of time. And it may be related to this protein. So the idea would be Put the protein in a pill. You could get that protein and it would give you some ability to resist those effects during the day of that sleep deprivation. So for instance, one could theorize that with your work schedule, you might be able to take that pill and it could make you feel a little bit better during the day. All right, let's light a fire under the FDA. Thank you so much Thank for you. coming in, Enjoyed Dr. It. Ogile. Randy? What? Did you sleep through that one too? Kind of. Oh, <laughs> no, I didn't. It was very interesting.